Tell us about the Kickstarter. All right, so the Kickstarter is focused on raising $10,000. Um, we're looking to purchase a building that we can put on site where we collect fish skins in upstate New York during their salmon season, okay. sport fishing season. So you're like the bear out there on the, yeah. the banks. Yeah, exactly. Almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For yeah, the almost. last several years. I like, know, I do. <laughs> even before I had Piggyback Treats Company making Piggyback Treats treats, um, I was going to the fish cleaning stations up there and giving them a five-gallon bucket, and they would throw the skins in the bucket, and at the end of the day, we'd pick it up and clean them and, you know, dehydrate them and give them to our dogs and our friends' dogs. And so that was really the treat that started the idea for me. I can use food waste. I can make it into healthy treats for pets. And um, seeing these, these salmon skins, I mean, salmon fishing is huge in upstate New York. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but then there's the sect of, of fly fishermen who come from all around the country just to fish right there. The it's world. really intense. Um, the, the salmon come up the river to, to spawn. Right. And so it's the end of their life cycle. Which makes it a little bit better. Some people don't like the idea of fishing or hunting or um, killing animals, but after these fish spawn, they die naturally anyway. And they literally litter the riverbanks. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So the fishermen are catching these fish at the end of their life cycle. Um, it's a, it's a, a legal sport fish, so yeah. it's done properly and it's regulated by the state. Um, you can't sell the, the fillets, um, so it won't be something that's overwhelming the, the, the population. Uh, of fish, so it's just a sport fish, but they take their fish to these cleaning stations and often they have the skin removed. In addition to the belly meat too, they'll have the belly meat cut off because it's the fattiest part and a lot of people don't like to eat it. And they're filling these 55 gallon barrels that go to the dump. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have to daily, multiple barrels per day, um, and this is just one cleaning station that I've had the opportunity to work with over the years, and there are many more in town. But they pay to send them to the dump, and then they, they just sit there. So knowing that we can collect something that the dogs love, they just each had a fish skin, yeah. salmon skins, and they love them, and they didn't leave any crumbs behind. It's their favorite treat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but knowing that they can have something like that, it's really, the hardest part is collecting them, but the work to make it into a treat isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. um, we dehydrate for about 24 hours after we wash them. We wash them with cold water and vinegar takes the slime off the outside, um, and then we just dehydrate them. Mm. I know, <laughs> for about 24 hours. So electricity, it uses some electricity. We've switched to an electric company that's wind power um, to try and keep things sustainable all yeah. around. Yeah. Um, we're in the process of converting all of our packaging to compostable bags. Um, just, yeah, we want to keep it well-rounded and make sure that we're not leaving anything behind. If, or if our goal is to reduce waste, then we want to do that fully. Um, but the salmon skins are amazing. Our Kickstarter is aimed to buy a building. We're really going to purchase a building to set up right there so we can dehydrate right there mm -hmm. rather than transport back and forth mm -hmm. by fa five gallon buckets. Well, right. our hope is to take them by a barrel. So if you'd be more in line with the sustainable locally sourced yeah. model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I know the same thing happens with the shad in the Delaware. Mm -hmm. You go up to the northern yeah. Delaware, they're, when they spawn, they die and they're floating there. Yeah. So maybe that's a possibility with not going we'll so far. There's a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, well, what what, what happens? I mean, if they we, without your intervention, do the, the corpses just come back downstream? And um, they'll they'll basically smells. just naturally. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they'll animals come out and yeah, eat them. They'll, eat a, they'll get eaten, they'll naturally decompose right. in the world and then we, dissipate. We uh, heard through the grapevine, and I don't know how true this is, but it's kind of creepy, that a bunch of vans white vans come up from Chinatown in New York City and that they collect the salmons off the riverbank, which is kind of creepy. Yeah. So if you're brave, go to Chinatown and order some salmon. Look for the white vans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you get that fish ball soup. You always wondered what that was. Now we might know. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. So that might account for some of them disappearing, but I think nature has a lot to do with it. Yeah, I, I can imagine. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hashtag Chinatown, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. But uh, yeah, uh, the, the whole idea of opening this dehydrating station is going to also help us um, with the demand uh, that is for the fish cans. It's our most popular treat that we sure. have on our line. Um, 
you know, and when people come and they see it, they're not seeing the normal one where they roll the skin up into like a giant stick and then it's like you're going to eat the stick. Or they compress them. They'll use cod skins. Yeah, like cod compress skins. Them or, or roll them up. Our salmon skins are like literal chips. They're really? like these nice big, um, actually I'll show you. We brought a jar of what we have left. This is it. Uh oh, everybody and got yeah. There we go. Uh, oh boy, oh boy. So yeah. we literally get them. <laughs> And if there's extra meat on it, we'll we'll kind of trim them up a little bit so they dehydrate a little bit easier. Yeah. But right there is one of them, and it, this is how it literally dehydrates, and it's completely dry. Um, and honestly, if if you like the smell of salmon, these things are actually quite delightful. They smell pretty fishy. Yeah. Well, they smell fishy, <laughs> they smell but you go fishy. first, Marcus. Not yeah. good. <laughs> I'm good. Candy's anxious. And uh, but yeah, it's these not. things are really great, and the dogs just crunch it up, and it's a wonderful mm -hmm. treat for them to get. It comes with so many so many great nutrients, uh, omega three for the most part. Yeah. So and you are getting your fish oil. Your fish oil. Oh God, God damn. Yeah. Yeah. Stop with the fish oil. Well, <laughs> you are. That's you're a getting, good idea. You're getting natural <laughs> omega three. Right. You're it's getting all if we give these back. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, they, <laughs> look so they get it all the time. Oh my goodness. Um, but look yeah, they get their omega threes. They get all their nutrients and, and minerals that come out of this. And uh, the the benefits of having this is great for the dog. Like right. it's great for their coat. It's great for skin allergies. It's great for joints. These guys um, certainly look yeah, very healthy. I mean, you know, uh, it helps with eye vision. Even yeah. it even ha has uh, like. Uh, a concept to help with brain functionality. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, and this is also not that, this is also a really great treat for cats too. Um, we actually get them thin enough to where when we dehydrate, you can cut it with a pair of scissors and really? give them a little like strip. Yeah. And it's almost like a rawhide for a cat. Really? And they actually like it. And we actually get so many more treats out of this skin. We'll, uh, we'll grind it up into a powder and we get, we sell, um, uh, a product called Salmon Sprinkle, okay. and it's a food additive for cats and dogs. So if you're a you dog, you just sprinkle a little, little, sprinkle a little bit on there. It's like seasoning for their food. It helps out if your food, if your dog is not eating like you want them to. This is a nice little, yeah. nice little, you know, push to get them to go yeah. for it. Go. Gourmet dog food. Gourmet spoonful dog of sugar. Food. There you go. Yeah, spoonful yeah. of sugar. <laughs> right. um, but they're really great. They look amazing when they're displayed and. Uh, yeah, people buy these up and we just cannot keep them on the shelf. So, the so that's your big seller then? This is our big seller. And the dehydrating station is literally going to bump production up to where we can start meeting the demand of everybody that, that comes to us. And they're like, do you have your fish cans? Do you sell in bulk? And uh, some of the great perks from our Kickstarter um, are around the skin. Every perk. Every perk yeah, is every around our skins. Okay. And um, they're really good ones in there. Like you're. You're gonna feel good when you pledge, and you're gonna get an awesome reward for it. So that's awesome. We'll put the link in the description of this video so that everybody knows exactly where to go. We're almost so halfway guys... through the campaign. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah it's man. scary. It's very scary. <laughs> Spend some sleepless nights. Oh, I can but imagine. we still have hope. Because I mean, you're doing an all or nothing. Campaign, yeah, it's right? all or nothing. I mean, we don't have. I don't want to say we don't have anything to lose um, if we don't, you know, complete the campaign. Our, our plans will just be put on hold till next fall. Right. Because um, salmon season really just lasts through October. Um, and if we're lucky, into early November. So yeah. we were hoping to have a kitchen set up now, like get it going now. Um, but that's fine. Like if it doesn't work out, we'll do it next year. Um, but really, like these, the barrels are just going to waste. So we're actually driving up this afternoon to New York. Oh. Um, we're going to bring a trailer with us and put buckets on it and bring them back. Cool. Load it up with fish skins. Bring it back. Very nice. So. Very nice. New York. So how far up? Four and a half to five hours. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Depending on traffic and speed, we're going to be on a train with a trailer with our soon-to-be dehydrator yeah. uh, that we're converting into one, and uh, we're going to take it easy. On What's the that? Uh, 87, 81. 85, 81. 81, yeah. Okay. 81. Takes you up, up there. through Binghamton, above yep. Binghamton. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you north, of north of Syracuse. North of Syracuse. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. headed towards Fort Drum. That's yep. that's what right. I was thinking. It's actually yeah. right there yeah. by Fort Drum. Yeah, is it uh, really? Yeah. Fort Drum. You're all yeah. alma mater. Yeah, Pulaski. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that place. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, the uh, winters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, when the snow banks get up over six feet, I never thought I'd see something that amazing before. Uh, so you have to go out in the field in it, and then it becomes yeah. a whole nother yeah, level of hell. Yeah. yeah. You understand why the bottom of hell is cold. <laughs> <in the inferno. laughs> 
Thank you for joining us for that clip of our weekly podcast. If you want to get more bonage footage or join us for the entire podcast, head on over to Patreon where our Eagle, Tiger, and Dragon subscribers get access to not only what we cast and talk about, but advanced lessons in your forms, in your Tai Chi, and in your life.